order to see me. Yes. Now we know God is a God of order. But sometimes he allows us to make moves. Hallelujah. Come to the altar, praise God. Does anybody remember that altar call? Yes. Yes. When God drew you to the altar. Hallelujah. Do you remember the day that God called you to be a part of his kingdom? Oh, I remember it well. Pray for one of our sisters this morning. Do you need us to come back there? Or do you want to come up front? Or? Come on. Well, don't try. You're going to do it, praise God. Hallelujah. Because Wednesday night, we talked about spiritual gifts. Yes. And we're going to continue that today. And one of the gifts of God is the gift of healing, praise God. Yes. The gift of miracles, praise God. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But God said, Jesus said, only believe. We can pray for whatever you want us to pray for, but if you don't believe, we're just speaking a mist. Hallelujah. So today we got to believe that the things that are going on in her life, and most of us know, so we don't have to share them, but we know that God is a healer. We know that God is a deliverer. We know that God is a comforter. And we know that God can meet you right where you yes. are. Yes, God. It's not a matter of what we do. It's a matter of what he's going to do today. Yes. Praise God. Lord. So do you believe God to be a healer? Jesus. Are you going to confess the healing virtues of God over your life? Are you going to tell the enemy when he comes back yes. in your mind to flee? Because God has healed me and I won't listen to your thoughts anymore. Yes. we got to get to the point, saints of God, that we're not complaining, but we're believing, praise Jesus. God. Hallelujah. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I decree and I declare by the grace of God, by the mercies of God, by the power of God that we anoint you today to be healed, delivered, and set free. Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but that that I have, that I give you. And what he gave them was the anointing of God, the healing virtues of God. And he told him to get up and walk. Now, he didn't have a Bible. He didn't have a Bible study. But praise God. But when he got up, he leaped for joy and he told others about the healing virtues of God. So today, we're going to actually, we're going to pray for your mouth to be healed. Praise God. We're going to pray for your mind to be healed. God is changing things. Praise God. He's not going to allow us. The word of God comes from the man of God said, much is given, much is required. God said, I gave you my son. So I'm required that you speak the things that I have given you. No more doubt. No more misunderstanding. God is for you and not against you, praise God. Today is today. Not tomorrow. Not what happened yesterday. But today, Kimberly, you have to make a decision. God is for me. God is for me. There is no nothing broken, nothing missing, no more than that. I'm going to walk in the things of God because he promised me those things. And God is not a God that he should lie, nor the son of man that he has to repent. Today is your day. Praise God. There's an old song, Shirley Caesar says, today is your day for a miracle. Believe in your miracle. You have the authority in God to bound the spirit of the enemy that speaks into your mind. And causes you to doubt what God has done. You say, God, no more. I don't need anybody else to pray for me, God, because I got you. Levate is nothing in the sight of God but a child of God. Hand for him, feet for him. But he's the one that does the healing. Don't get caught up in man. There's nothing that we can do, nothing that we can give you. But the love of God, the grace of God, and the anointing of God for your life. Today you have to say, God, I believe. No, no, not I do. God, I believe. God, I believe. Don't whisper, tell the devil, God, I believe. God, I believe. No, God, I believe that Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is my Savior. And you are the God that heals. You are the God that heals. You are the God that heals. 
Today is your day. Today is your day. There's no more day. There's no more day. And I'm saying these to the ones that she communicated. No more doubt, no more unbelief. And when she calls you, say, let's pray. When she texts you, say, let's pray. When, we, when she asks you for something, say, what did God say? Go to the Word. Search it out. Mm. And if God says, I'm going to provide a wait on the provision. If God says, I'm a healer, he's a healer. What did God say? You got to know this for yourself. I'm not talking about somebody who don't know this. I walk with God. I've seen him take me from here. And he's got me here, but I'm ready to go up here. I'm telling you what I know. God is a healer. When the doctors told me that they didn't know why I was in the hospital sick for a week, but the man of God came, the elders of God came, and they laid hands on me one Sunday morning laying in the hospital bed after being there a week. And all they brought was the word of God. And they laid hands. Because the word says, any sick among you call on the elders of the church and the prayer of faith. And when they left by this afternoon, I was sitting on the bed. And, and by Monday, I was standing at the window. And the doctor came in and said, I don't believe you're standing by the window. But he didn't know God. Jesus. I didn't even know God that well back then. I was young in Christ. But it doesn't take God said, it, but a mustard seed of faith. Yes. You got to have faith in God. Jesus. Because man will fail you. Man will let you down. The Bible said there's a time to cry and a time to rejoice. Yes. Choose to rejoice. Yes. Choose to rejoice. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Are y'all praying with her? Yes. Y'all praying with her. God calls us to pray one for the other. Hallelujah. One for the other. Hallelujah. 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 When Dad uh, picked up, are you going? You already on? <laughs> that one is too. Praise God. Praise God. You are good. You are good. And very good. Praise God. Thank God for everybody that's here today. It's okay that we move things out of order, right? And yes. It's okay that we let God do what he needs to do in the house of God. It's not ours anyway. It really doesn't matter. <laughs> Praise God. He's the Lord of this house. And we send prayers out to our pastor and our pastor's wife, praise God. Hallelujah, that God continues to bless them and each and every one that's here today. Everybody that has a need, everybody that has a desire, everybody that may be hurting right now, we pray for you today. That you get to know who God really is. That you get to know who God really is. He's just not somebody you come to church with on Sunday and and that's enough. You got to go deeper. It's not enough just to show up on Sunday morning. It's not enough anymore. The world is falling apart. It's not enough just to show up. It's time for us to be Jesus on the earth. Hallelujah. It's the time to believe in what he says. Father God, I just thank you today. Yes. I thank you for the sun <laughs> that rose this morning to wake us up. I thank you for the strength and activities of our limbs. I thank you, Lord God, for the gas to get here. God, I thank you for everything, the breath that I breathe, God. I thank you that you are my Lord and my Savior. You are my shepherd. And you lead me by the path. My righteousness belongs to him, not me. Your righteousness belongs to him, not you. Don't take it lightly. Praise God. Wednesday night, Wednesday night, we talked about spiritual gifts. And I and I I let some of the, the saints that was here speak on. I, I had, I don't know, you know, I told y'all God gave me visions and things and and then I just do them. I don't know why I just do them. Because he's do them. And, and, and so they had to pull up from a sheet that I had a spiritual gift and then come back to the microphone and tell me about the spiritual gift. And when I left, I thought Wednesday was going to be it. But of course.
us, you know, when I, when I do is what he says. And so he started still like, no, you need to continue in the spirit to give. You need to continue to study and not just for him, but for yourself. So that means me that God is trying to take me some. Oh, take that back. God don't have to try. God is taking me somewhere. He's telling me, prepare yourself. There is no trying in God. He's already created everything. And he knows my end from my beginning. So I, I'm studying again spiritual gifts and it's getting good to me. <laughs> do, do you ever have a, a, a cake? Oh, my, my, my granddaughter cooks German chocolate cake for me and a red velvet cake for her. And, 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 and so uh, uh, you ever get a piece that is the last piece and everybody wanted, but you get it. And oh, that's the best cake. Or oh, when you were little, and we used to ride in the back seat of my, my parents' car, me and my sisters, and we had ice cream. And it could be running down your arm, but you wasn't going to have the last lick because you weren't going to get finished before you did. So you could put it in their face and you could keep it. Y'all ain't doing that. Oh, y'all got, okay, y'all got, you know, Xbox and stuff. Y'all don't know what funny is. <laughs> but, 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 but my heart was getting so good that I wanted to keep going. So, so bear with me. It'd be a little bit different today. It's more of a teaching than a preaching, if that's all right with you. Because the lack of knowledge in the church about spiritual gifts is hurting the church. See, what you think you're doing is you're coming on Sunday morning because you think it's a requirement and you check the box for God to say, I've been here. But God said, there's so much more I need you to do. There's so much more I want to give you. There's so much more I want to impart in you and just come to church and come here. So I, I, I was going to start off, okay, Lord, I'm, I'm going to do what you said. But I was going to start off with uh, the gift of faith, because I like talking about faith. It takes faith to believe in the things of God. So as I was finishing up this morning, you know, you go back through and you read over and you make sure you can pronounce the words <laughs> before you get up here before y'all. And God sent a scripture that just broke me down. And Stanley said, you're going to be mad to sit on I'm working on it. I'm working on it. But it's a gift that not many people ask for. See, we ask for the gift of prophecy because we can stand up front. We ask for the gift of evangelism so we can go. And we ask for the gift of miracles so we can have stuff. But we're going to first talk about the gift of wisdom. have 
a good understanding. The fear of the Lord. See, we don't fear the Lord in reverence anymore. We've got to the point that we move so fast we take God for granted. Maybe I serve him today and maybe I won't. But it says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding of his praise that his praise endures forever. Wisdom begins with the fear of the Lord. It begins with knowing who God is and who we are in his life. His compassion becomes a part of us when we understand his life. That leads us to understand and then to practice righteousness. A life of wisdom is ultimately a result of God's praise and worship. Praise and worship is intimate to God. He seeks a worshiper. What he's doing is he's seeking the heart, your heart. How will you serve me? How will you love me? How would you take care of my people? In worship, he's seeing your heart. You're making him a priority. The Holy Spirit gives some of the spiritual gifts of wisdom, not only to impart the truth and the understanding to the believer, but to invoke a response of holiness. Where I have not, that may be my fault, heard that word much anymore. We preach about titles, we talk about titles, but do we talk about holiness, righteousness, living before God, holiness. Wisdom doesn't end with knowledge, but it is expressed and transformed every day through our heart and in our life. 1 Corinthians 1, 17 through 31, allow me to read that please. 17 says, For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, and not with words of elo eloquent wisdom, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of his power. Now what does that mean, emptied of his power? That I'm not believing the power of God that's working, but I'm relying on myself. So I have to speak eloquently in order to draw you know. No man comes unless the Spirit of God draws him. 20 goes on to say, where, the, where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made the foolish, made foolish the wisdom of the world? Whew, yes, he has. For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom. It pleased God through the folly of what we preach and save those who believe. For Jews demanded signs and the Greeks seek wisdom. Jews demanded signs. The word of God says, get to call and come without repentance, so they want to see stuff. Miracle signs and wonders for the unbeliever, not the believer. It's the believer's place to work the miracle, the signs, and the wonders, not to look for them. 25 goes on and says, for the fullest of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For consider your calling, brothers. Not many of you were wise according to the worldly standards. That's me. Many of you were not wise according to the worldly standards. And I've told y'all this before. God has placed me in positions that I was not qualified for, promoted me into places that I had no business, sitting me, sitting me near people at a table that I was able to converse with. I remember going to Arkansas, Big Bill, Arkansas years ago and was able to speak to the president of the company without fear. Now why was I not fear? Because what I was saying was not from me but from God. See, when God puts you in a place that you know you don't belong, <laughs> when you know you don't have the degrees to stand up with it, but he gives you what you need spiritually and naturally at that time. See, I know God personally as a father, so I can testify to these things. 26 says, for consider your calling, brothers. Not many of you were wise according to the worldly standards, but many were powerful 
Not many were of noble birth, but God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world. Come on now. God chose what was low and despised in the world. When I thought I wasn't good enough, when I thought I didn't know enough, when I thought that there was somebody better than me all the time, but God chose not me. God called me, I didn't call him. God chose what was low and despised in the world, even things that are not, to bring to nothing things that are. So that no human being might boast in his presence of God. And because of him, you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God, righteousness and sanctification and redemption. So that as it is written, let one who boasts, boast in the Lord. See, that's wisdom. Selfishness is for man. Pride, arrogance. It's for man, but the word of God said if you're going to boast in the things you do in the church, you do it because you're boasting in who God is, not what I've done. That's the gift of wisdom. We need to pray for wisdom in the house. We need to pray for wisdom in how we care for others. We need to pray for wisdom on what we say. Because sometimes our words can be our downfall. Pray for wisdom. The gift of teaching. The gift of teaching is important in the church. The spiritual gift of teaching is one that carries a heavy responsibility in the church. In fact, James 3 and 1 warns, not many of you should become teachers. Not that you can't teach, <laughs> but you need to be mindful. What do we always say? That we have to be first partakers of what we tell you to do. So be mindful if you want to be a teacher. It says, my brothers, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. So if I stand before you and I, I lie to you to get your money, oh, I'm going to be judged. Or if I lie to you to get, my, get something from you, manipulate you, oh, the teacher will be judged before the student. That's when wisdom comes in. Is this God? Am I listening to him or is Satan speaking in my ear? For the word of God says, my children know my voice and a stranger they will not follow. Like every believer, teachers are to be stewards of every word that comes out of their mouth. But the greater responsibility to which they are called is to be stewards of the word of God to his people. Teachers have been entrusted with a task of effectively communicating what the Bible says, what it means, and how we are followers of Jesus Christ, and to apply it to our lives each and every day. First Timothy 3 and 15 say, without the gift of without the gift, the church will quickly fall into error and in sin. Without the gift of the teaching, the church will fall in error and in sin. It's not enough for us to, to say something or do something. What is it called? Itchy ears? You know, give you something that sounds good? Hermeneutics? You know, throw a song in between you preaching? No, that's not what God says. He said, preach the word. He said, be instant in season and out of season. He said, be ready to give every man a word for the question that they ask. He didn't say shy away from him. He said be ready. Be ready. Teachers are the, I don't want to say the backbone because the pastors and the preachers preach. But sometimes we need the unadulterated word of God to be set down, opened up, brought down, given to us, explained to us, cross the T's, dot the I's. We need to understand what you're preaching about so that we can live this thing. We need to have an understanding of what God is asking us for. Because when I preach the word and you leave out of here, you're going to forget by tomorrow what I said. But if I teach you the word by scripture 
It stopped long enough to explain it to you. One word is going to stick with you the rest of the week. I pray in Jesus' name, holiness. Holiness. God, what is holiness? Am I holy? Holiness. So you get a word, and you get it in your mind and in your heart, and you study the word, and then you apply it to your life. That's how you grow in maturity with God. The gift of service. Now, I'm picking now. I can't read this without thinking of Carolyn Teresa. Amen. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying I have respect for person because I don't want to do what they do. But anyway, I was reading it and, and, and right off the bat, they, 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 they came to my mind. They, they get up early. That's the product, that's the uh, proverb woman, right? <laughs> to feed their families. <laughs> but they get up early and they go and they pick up others to bring them to church so that they can be blessed in their word. Oh, they close the church down. They come out here on Monday night and they pray. If you ever need anything, you have nobody else to go with you, call one of them, they go. They, they have a labor of love like I've never seen before. Now, I'm not praising them. I'm just saying God is working through them. But he requires it for all of us. You know, y'all could be like me and say, well, I don't have the patience. <laughs> well, who's the patient giver? I don't have the time. Well, who gives us all time? I don't have the heart. But who gives us <coughs> the gift of service. The gift of service or ministry covers a wide range. Just a few of the things that I said. But understand it means so much more. The Holy Spirit endows some believers with the gift to fill many gaps in the ministry. Many gaps. You know, we don't need two to do all things, but we can use one to do some things. Do you feel me? You may can't pick somebody up, but you can look close the church. You, you, you may can't take somebody home, but, but you can help somebody with a need. See, the, the gift of service goes so far. You know, the, 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 the disciples told, told the men of the church, y'all stay here, and y'all feed the, the widows, the women, because we have to go out and preach. We, we, we have to send the gospel to the world. So while we're going and we're preaching it and we're carrying the gospel, somebody has to see about the house. The gift of service. See, these are things most people don't ask for. Oh, God, I want to be a prophet. Oh, anoint me to be an apostle. Titles. God, anoint them to serve. <laughs> In Jesus' name. Make them become servants because you can't be a leader unless you serve. Oh, you didn't know that? You thought you'd be a leader first? No, you serve first. Jesus said, I came not to serve, but to be served. And are we greater than him? Ask God, where can I put my hand to for the sake of the church? For the sake of the kingdom? But the Spirit endowed believers to be filled with this gift, a great gift. Many of us, many of us in the body of Christ desire to help, but don't know how to help. So we're going to teach you what the gift is. Those gifts that we do not seek recognition or position for are really the spotlight in the church. Because the church can't continue without them. They are so needed. Praise God. I'm going to get off of them because they don't like to be talked about. I'm going to talk about them. Also, the gift of miracles. Okay, y'all Okay, y'all happy now. Okay. The gift of miracles. The spiritual gift of miracles described in the scripture are, are just like the, the healing virtues of God. 1 Corinthians 12, 10, the gifts are subject to the divine will of God and his purposes and not decided by the one who performs the miraculous work. And that's what I was trying to get Kimberly to, to see. It doesn't matter how many times you ask us to pray.
pray for you, the miracle comes from him. It doesn't, it doesn't matter how many times you ask me for a dime. If you want finances, he says he's a God that gives finances. He's the one that provides. See, you're asking the wrong person. We are help meets to you. He's the source. So my job is to continually send you to the source. Direct you to Jesus. Not to man. But, but, but we also, you know, we also talked about how, how God allows the men of God to be used, the hands of God, the feet of God, the mouth of God, as he used Philip when the city of Samaria and preached, the, preached Christ to others. And he also used Philip to do miracle signs and wonders. And we all know Stephen. Praise God. We're used by God. Even until the day that he died. When he asked God to forgive them. Because they wanted to stone him. For what? For seeing about the church. See, we want to be miracle workers. But it comes more than just showing what you can do. It's talking about being the miracle worker for God. Priscilla Shire always says, everybody want to work miracles, but nobody want to stand in front of the Red Sea. Nobody want to go lay hands on those that have leprosy. Everybody remembers the ten lepers when Jesus prayed for them and they went off. And only one returned. See, you're going to get a position, oh, well, they didn't come back and say thank you to me. That's because she had wrong from her mind because it wasn't you that worked the miracle. It was Christ working through you. But he understands he can't use everybody to work miracles because you haven't got over the pride of life. Holiness. Holiness. But if they don't come back and say thank you to Jesus, they won't say thank you to you. But you just have to get back up, tie up your shoes, and get back out there. By sprinting forth thy hand to heal, and the signs and wonders may be done by the name of the Holy Child of Israel. And when we had prayed and placed in place what was shaken, the things that bothered us, the thing that came against us, the, 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 the infection in our bodies, the mindset, but we've done all we can, we still have to stay. Oh, I stopped my toe and I prayed and the, the, the hurt's still there. You got to stay. You have to stay. You have to believe. You have to understand. Your words have to connect with his. And it's his will. See, that's what we said. We pray. Your will be done. But God, I got cancer. Your will be done. You know, if, uh, what's the gentleman, um, um, the pastor whose wife died? Priscilla Shire. Tony Evans. Tony Evans. And his son blessed me so much with the speaking over his mother at her funeral. And he said they had prayed and they had prayed and all over the world they were praying and, and touching and agreeing and, 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 and they had people who were calling and sending notes and messages and healing. They were doing everything that they needed to do in the Word to get his wife healed. And yet she went on the call. Now this is Tony Evans, who's been preaching as long as I've been around. So we assume that he had the miracle working power to raise up from the dead. But she went on the glory. So does that make God not God? Or is that God's will that we release them when it's time to go? But his son was saying, God, I ask you to heal my mother. We pray, God, and we believe, God, and I ask you to heal my mother. But he said, I found out through my tears and my pain and my grief that God heals her, that, that she's walking the streets of gold, that everything about her is renewed, everything about her is brand new. There's no more sickness, there's no more pain. She is healed. We don't see leaving here as a healing. But everybody want to go to heaven. There's only one way to go to heaven. You got to leave here. We, 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 we're still dealing.
dealing with the fear of death. But Jesus told us, I conquered it. There's no more fear in death. The fear should be to live with these folks we're living with. That's the fear. But he said, I conquered death. There's no more, there's no more torment. When you get to the point that you realize you're just going to go to sleep. And to be absent in the body is to be present with God. What greater love to be worshiping with the angels. What greater love. The gift of miracles. The gift of mercy. Now I ask, any, I ask everybody who knows everybody pretty well in this place. If I ask you who has the biggest gift of mercy, who would you say? Then she say you if you say him. I'm going to do it like this. Yeah. No, I think he got you. Our pastor and our pastor's wife has a mercy gift that I sit back and just watch. How can they be so merciful? I cried out to him one time about the situation I was going through. I said, I know God anointed me with the gift of grace, but do he have to do mercy too? Yeah. <laughs> mercy put you in places you don't want to be. Mercy, mercy will make you say yes when you really want to say no. Mercy will have you up in the middle of the night praying for somebody you don't even like. <laughs> That's mercy. I'm just saying. God, you gave me grace and now you give me mercy. What else you gonna say? <laughs> Sorry, Lord. Anyway, but understanding that mercy is needed in the church. Every gift that I'm talking about is needed in the church. So I asked you, I said, when you had a gift that hit you, I ain't hear nobody say that's me. <laughs> do, do nobody have a gift? All right, Pastor. That ain't locked the doors. We're not leaving until somebody get a gift. And, and you know, I, it reminds me, I love to talk about my days in the Pentecostal church. I'm sorry. I love to talk about it. And how the, the, the mothers, y'all know the mothers, mothers didn't play. Come in here dressed up any kind of way if you want to. The mother's gonna cover you up with them scarves. <laughs> but you know, how many of y'all know that thing called Terry? Yeah. Uh, and, and the mothers, if you didn't have the gift of tongues or you didn't have the Holy Spirit, you would have to tarry on the altar. And you didn't get up till you spoke something. I don't care if it was Japanese, Spanish, it didn't matter. You was not getting up and sweat. You know, everything running, tearing, running. The mother said, you're going to leave here today, you're going to get it. <laughs> well, we can't even stay in the church for a good hour without us checking our watches. We, we went to visit the church last Sunday, praise God. And one of the ladies that used to be a member here that lives down in Lyons, by Daniel area, she said, oh, we had a good church. We had good service the other night. Oh, I think it was like 2 o'clock when we left. T 2 o'clock in the afternoon? <laughs> No, 2 o'clock in the morning. Ooh. We don't even want to. I ain't even going to go there. I ain't going to say we. Okay. We don't even want to stay here. 2 o'clock in the morning, y'all still got church going on? Now, that was church. Because you were leaving everything at the church. You're taking nothing. We run out too fast. We run out too fast. We don't want to stay in the presence of God. We worship too fast. We don't want to. We don't even want to worship God. What's wrong with you, lady? That ain't what you put there, man. Let me come back. We don't want to worship God. It's an inconvenience. You don't think so? Okay, y'all see that camera up there? I'm going to play it for y'all one day. Show y'all what y'all look like. Oh, I shall be glad when they get through singing that song. That is not my song. Where did they get that song? I shall not want. Where did they get that it's not about what you sing. It's about your worship to God. That's a whole nother teaching. Do you know how to worship? Do you know how to surrender? Do you know how to let go? Do you know how to let God's presence come and fill you? Do you know? Okay, class, Wednesday night. Be here at 7 o'clock. <laughs> We're going to talk about how to get the presence of God in your life to the point that you don't want to let it go. It's not a Sunday morning thing. It's a lifestyle. The presence of God is with me wherever I go. I, I, 
I, I, sometimes I repeat myself, I'm sorry. I, I think about when I was in the secular world and, and, and people would be around me and they would slip and cuss. Oh, they said, oh, Pastor Lady, oh, Preacher Lady, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Why are you sorry? Why are you sorry and cursing in front of me? I am not God. Do y'all realize that God is everywhere? Do you actually believe that he said it? I'll be with you always, even until the end of the world. Do you believe every time you mess up, he's right there? If we knew that, in our knowing, we'll be careful how we treat people. We'll be careful how we talk about people. I'm going to be talking about the gifts of mercy. Let's move on. Sorry. Sidebar. Y'all just put that in your notes for later. The gift of mercy. All Christians are called to be merciful because God has been given, has, has been given mercy to us. <clears throat> the spiritual gift of mercy means to be patient and to be compassionate ooh, toward those that are suffering and afflicted. To concern, don't be too concerned with the physical, but be more concerned with the spiritual. Be more concerned with souls that's not made that in. Because I, I, I jokingly say, I better not. The concern for the physical as well as the spiritual need to be to those that are hurting, to those that are crying out for God's mercy. The Holy Spirit gives the spiritual gift of mercy to some in the church to love and assist those who are suffering and walk with them until the Lord allows them or the burden to be lifted. That goes back to the servants, the servant leader. Those that show compassion one for the other, that they care enough for your soul that they won't let you die. That's the gift of mercy. Romans 7 15 say, Rejoice with those who rejoice, mourn with those who mourn, and bear one another's burden. But we want to say, God, I, I got my own burdens. I can't, I can't take care of them. I got to take care of my we are We are a generation. I got to take care of my own. I can't help somebody else. If I help somebody else, that means I'm going to go lack it. I've never seen God's children beg for bread. Never seen. I was telling somebody the other day, I'm giving a plug in for Tuesday Treasure. Y'all know I am. And, and, and I was telling them that since we've been going, still it's been over a year, right? It's been over a year since we've been over there, been here and then there. There's never been a time when our baskets, buckets, what do you want to call them, have been empty. How does that happen? I have a lot of clothes. I don't have that many clothes. I couldn't feel it myself. Somebody greater had to give me that vision. And when they gave me the vision, they told me that they would supply the need for what I was doing. Because what I was doing was not of myself, but was so that I could bless others and tell them about the goodness of God. Has never been empty. Have people texting me, calling me, or messaging me, I have, I want to bring, I have, I don't even, see, you don't have to know how the blessing comes, just know the blessing. If you ever worry about how something's going to happen, stop worrying about the something. Go to the one who has it all. The creator, he hasn't stopped creating. He is still creating things. He's still creating us. Even though the word says old things have passed away and all, and all things have become new, there's still some old in me. There's still some old in you. And the creator wants to take that out so that you can have a different kind of relationship. Holiness. In holiness, you will find these spiritual gifts. They don't come just because you ask. He has to see your life. He has to know that when he imparts that into you, you're going to use it for his glory and not your own. The gifts of God. Come without repentance. But the work of God means you've got to have a heart for God. Does anybody understand how important it is to use 
through those gifts in the church. That there's somebody that's in need for a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge, a word of healing. There's so many in the street that's in need of a savior. So that the gift of evangelism is for the world. The gift of a pastor is for the church. But you are the gift to the body of Christ. You are the gift. Much is given. Much is required. God knows. He does not make a mistake. He has given us so much. It is time for us to go to work. Wednesday night Bible study. Bring your questions. Bring your misunderstanding, your understanding. Bring your Bibles. We're going to answer questions Wednesday night. What is this gift? How do I give it? How do I live it? What is holiness? What is righteousness? Am I pleasing God? Am I doing his will? Those are things that we need to know. We can't assume. We got to, we got to know in our knowing that I'm living right and I'm not just pretending for someone else. Yeah. This is real, saints. God is real. God is real. And he has gifted you with what you need in his power. Don't bury the gift. Use the gift. Amen. Father God, I thank you right now for your love and your compassion. I thank you right now, God, that our minds and our, our hearts are open to receive from you. I thank you right now, God, as we open up our hearts and we sit to surrender everything, everything, everything to you, God. That you, the author and the finisher of our faith, will answer our questions. You are the God of the plentiful. You are the God of more than enough. We need you, God, in Jesus. If there's any out there that wants prayer and needs prayer, want us to pray for them as a church, church body. We have the elders in the church that will call up or call on the name of Jesus for you. If you are good and very good, then you are dismissed. God goes with you. And what is the one word I want y'all to remember this week? Oh, oh it's holiness. Without no man will see God. Amen.